Hey guys, today we are testing out one of the most underrated, underutilized discs in the MVP Axiom lineup. It is the Axiom Wrath. So part of the reason why I say underrated and underutilized is because I never really see people throwing the Wrath or talking about the Wrath or really even buying the Wrath because for the most part they've been sold out for a long, long time now. MVP just dropped a stock release to retailers somewhat recently, which is how I picked this guy up. The Wrath has the numbers 9, 4.5, and negative 0.52 which means it actually has a lot of overlap with an MVP mold that's really popular, the Tesla, which has the numbers 95, negative one, two. MVP's website actually markets the Wrath as a worn in or beat in Tesla, which is kind of surprising because the numbers would almost indicate the opposite, but here we are. So let the action. Oh yeah. And I think part of the reason why MVP says the Wrath is a more understable Tesla is because all the Teslas I've thrown are actually extremely overstable. So I think what Axiom was going for here was to get that Thunderbird type disc that will really hook at the end but still have good glide and push straight for a long time, which is a type of disc that I really, really love. People have been following the channel for a while know that I'm a big PD thrower, so I'm thinking this is going to fit a pretty similar slot to my PD, which so far fits the bill. One thing I really like about this guy is the fact that the hand feel is so low profile. It's very thin disc with very little dough. I mean, this guy is as flat as they come. So it just feels so kind of minimalist in the hand, which I'm a huge fan of. Guys, they just mowed out here yesterday. These holes are looking beautiful. Still even smells like fresh cut grass. Just an amazing scent. Normally I'd throw the forehand here, but I hurt my wrist, so I'm not really throwing forehands today. I'm gonna try to smash this on the lefty backhand. We'll see how it goes. That's not too bad. No power on it, but it's in a good spot. There we go, get through there, we'll skip. Yeah, what an approach that was. So as I alluded to earlier, I love that overstable 9, 10 speed. That's not like super overstable, like a Firebird, but something like the Thunderbird, the PD, one of my all-time favorite discs, Vulture, the Tesla, and of course the Wrath. And I really like where the Wrath is sitting in that mix of discs where it has some turn. It's not just dummy overstable. And the turn allows it to stay in the air a little bit longer. So you get that penetrating straight distance, but you still get that really aggressive fade at the end. So you know it's gonna be overstable. You know you're not going to accidentally turn it over. I think this is going to be a real winner backhand and forehand. I wish I could do more forehands today, but we're going to stick to lefty. And this is actually going to be a pretty good lefty hole, I think. But watch me say that and absolutely botch the lefty line. 237 feet. I should be able to get there. Probably have to put this out pretty flat. My left arm is definitely not strong enough to get there on pure hyzer with such an overstable disc. So see what I can do. Again, gave that absolutely zero juice, but I think we're inside circle one. I gotta drain this one to prove to everyone that ambidextrous disc skull is a real thing. There we go, baby, the lefty birdie. Two lefty birdies in a row, actually, dang. And if you guys have a favorite overstable 9 or 10 speed in that Thunderbird type slot, let me know down in the comments. I'm curious. I want to try some more, so let me know what the good ones are. Yeah, that holds turn really well. Pretty happy with that shot.
That lasso really demonstrates something I love about this cyst. The fact that if you get it on Anheuser early, you put some air underneath it, it'll hold that turn for a long time. You definitely see that negative 0.5 turn come into play early on its lifespan. I mean, I just got this. It's really not that beat in. Whereas a lot of the PDs I throw when they're new don't have a whole lot of turn out of the box and you really have to beat it in for a while to get that turn like my Nordic Phenom. But that Wrath will just turn out of the box but you do have to power up on it. So it's not super friendly to low powered throwers, newer people on the course, unless they just really want a really overstable disc. But to really get to fly the way you want, a nice flat straight shot or a little bit of Anheuser with some power, it's gonna be really nice with this disc. I'll go in. Oh! <laughs> Dang! I mean, this is the hole to get an ace on. If you're gonna get an ace, that was pretty dang close. Jeez Louise. This was a freaking despicable chain out. Now I gotta go make a 30 foot putt for birdie. My goodness. Come on. Oh. You know, Birdogi is one thing. What do they call eagle to par? Yar? Yard it? I yard it? Yard it? And if you too want to almost ace, why don't you go check out Grow and Throw? This video is sponsored Grow and Throw. They're an amazing retailer here in Columbia, Missouri. Also online at growandthrow.shop. They got tons of discs, tons of MVP, Axiom, all the stuff you want. Go check them out. Not clean, but pretty good. I'm making a formal request to change Eagle to par from ER to EGAR, which I think rolls off the tongue a lot better. And it's very relevant, because I may EGAR this one too. Oh! Okay, I can make that one. Not an EGAR, still a birdie. So I want to kind of sum everything up together. I'd say that this disc is a really dependable, overstable flyer with a little bit of turn out of the box, which is really nice. I think this is going to beat in to be something very straight, but still very torque resistant. I love beating in really overstable discs. You can get that straight flight, but you still know it's not going to turn over. This is one that I'm surprised more people aren't throwing, especially considering how many MVP Axiom fans there are nowadays. I feel like I see so many people at the course with just all MVP Axiom bags, and this is going to be a really good choice if I had to put this against the Tesla I like this more than the Tesla just because the Tesla for me the ones that I've thrown the Neutron ones have been really consistently like extremely overstable whereas this is a lot more workable than the Tesla's I've thrown but again it changes so much run to run plastic to plastic there's so much variation even within one disc mold that it's hard to say for sure which one I would like one over the other it really just depends on a lot of different factors but uh, I really like the wrath that's pretty much what I'm just trying to say here love the wrath and we got one more hole here the behemoth of hole 18 it's under construction so a little bit of a temp layout here for 18 part three let's see how it goes so the basket is way down past the this like orange fence line, maybe another 150 feet. There's kind of two lines you can take. I think you can go, I think the intent at least is that you go straight through here and just have something kind of fade in. Or you take it on the left, like kind of a safe place. You don't have to do the water carry, but uh, we're not babies. We're gonna go over the water and try to just do the straight shot. See if we can get in bounds. Oh yeah, that's a beauty. Get over. Oh, nice. Well, guys, that's going to wrap it up for the Wrath. It's an awesome disc. Go pick one up at GrownThrow.shop. That'd be awesome. They got a bunch of MVP Axiom discs. Um, the worst thing I would say about the Wrath is the fact that I said the Wraith about 100 times. Had to edit out all the times I said in of a Wraith instead of Axiom Wrath. But, you know, it's a small oversight. And I think the Wrath is a cooler name anyway. So... It means a lot to me that you guys watched all the way through. Thanks so much. Go like and subscribe. That also means so much to me. And as always, I will see you next time.